especially like with the Atocha, if you think about Atocha, I mean, so it sparked a frenzy where everyone was like, oh my God, all these shipwrecks have gold and silver on them. But really, I mean, in my whole professional career as an underwater archaeologist, I've never found gold and silver on one. So yeah, maybe yeah. one day. Well, I think I, I found something that you would consider just as valuable as gold. I'm on the, the bow over here. Yes. I don't know if Trish, you want to come over here, but I think I found oysters. Oh, perfect. That's what I need. <laughs> so there, there you go. Do you, do you want me to cut some of these off for you? For There's your... a wealth of information on yeah. those. <laughs> Welcome everyone to Archaeology Arcade, the online program of the Florida Public Archaeology Network, where we play video games with archaeologists. How cool is that? I'm sure uh, maybe we're the only ones doing that. Maybe there's other people out there doing it. We just don't know, but this is a fun program that we like to do. Uh, I'm Mike with the Florida Public Archaeology out of our coordinating center in Pensacola. As always, I'm joined by my co-host and colleague out of our North Central office in the capital of Tallahassee, Tristan. And joining us today, uh, we're very lucky to have a special guest, underwater archaeologist, Melissa Price, who works for uh, Florida's Division of Historical Resources, Bureau of Archaeological Research. I think I said that right. Is that right, Melissa, or did I yeah. mess the name up? <laughs> no, that was perfect. Thank you for the lovely intro. Oh, no, no problem. We appreciate you joining us today. Uh, this is a game we've played uh, in, in the past. This is Sea of Thieves. This is a pirate open world kind of adventure fantasy game. So this is a good game to play uh, to just be able to chat over, particularly with uh, underwater archaeologists like yourself. Uh, Tristan, I, I'm looking at the Twitch screen. It looks like we still have the starting soon screen up. That was just delayed. Okay. Okay, no worries. Well, if you are, I see there's a few folks with us right now. If you're on Twitch, uh, just feel free to, if you have a comment or a question, just put that in the stream chat and I'll try to kind of keep up with it. Although sometimes it's hard when I'm, uh, if we get attacked by other pirates, <laughs> I might have a problem. We'll, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, so Tristan uh, and Melissa, how, how are you two doing? I know you guys got some weather in, uh, in your neck of the woods right now. Yeah, it's pretty foggy and overcast, but I don't mind it. I like a rainy day. Well, maybe uh, in this game, we can find ourselves in a storm and see what happens. <laughs> Make a shipwreck. Yeah. Yes. At, and Melissa, have you ever, uh, I know you're not like a huge gamer. Have you ever played or seen this game before? No, I haven't. I, my knowledge of games is like Nintendo 64, you know, and that's about Classics. it. Like I stopped after that. So. <laughs> you know what? You're probably, you're probably not wrong for stopping them because games, <laughs> you know, I don't know if they've really gotten, the graphics have gotten better, but I don't know if you can beat the classics. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Yeah. Mario Kart, I think, uh, you know, has a special, special place in my memory. So yeah, that's a great that's a great one. Yeah, I tried to turn my son on to the old ones, but he likes uh, Roblox and oh, okay <laughs> Minecraft, whatever those are. Yeah, no, my um, nephew too. He he loves big, that stuff. Big time. Um, so we are. What did we pick, Tristan? Are you where are you at? I'm looking for you. Oh, you are. I just don't. Oh, there you are. I didn't see you. <laughs> so this is our ship, Melissa. We've had uh, Nicole grinning on before. She's our. Uh, she's also an underwater archaeologist. Uh, and of course, I, I think you know her. So you, you yes, of course, her. yeah. Uh, we like to ask. We've we've asked her before when she's played this game. But what do you think about our uh, the ship in this game? How how does it compare to what a real? What are we on a sloop? I guess this is a sloop. I mean, looks a little small, but you know, for the purposes of the game, let's go down below. I kind of want to see what's what's going on down below. Got yeah, some you space on the deck. Right Not in. really any structure. Okay, look at that. Huh. And Tristan, you should on come down into the underwater too and look at the keel. Oh, nice, nice. Huh. <laughs> That's jump fun. Right in. <laughs> I mean, you don't even need any like snorkel equipment. <laughs> right. Yeah, they didn't need it back then. That's yeah, pretty this cool. This game is not like super accurate at all. No, no, no. I wouldn't expect it to be. <laughs> but still, I mean, okay. I mean, I guess I would just say it seems very small and like very minimalistic. But mm -hmm. that's probably so you guys can move around the deck and actually do what you need to do. Because they would have had cargo everywhere down below. And I mean, is there a galley? 
I didn't see a galley. So there a little bit of a is on the brig. I don't know on the oh, brigantine, yeah. but maybe okay. on this one there is. Yes, yeah. I think there is. Yeah, there's a stove right over here. Oh, nice, a wee little stove. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is where I I put Tristan uh, Tristan in his prison when he is misbehaving. Oh. I put him in there. As you do. <laughs> Sometimes he doesn't follow directions. You tell him to go in there. That's fun. And so, right. <laughs> Always chasing the animals, trying to trying to ride all the all the creatures for some reason. I don't know why he does that. Mm -hmm. So you are, of course, an underwater archaeologist. Can you tell us a little bit about um, maybe how you got into underwater sure. archaeology, and then also what uh, what what is I mentioned Bureau of Archaeological Research, but what is that? Yeah. So I'll start with your first one, and I wonder if it'll be similar to some of your other guests. Um, I started out with a bachelor's in anthropology and archaeology and I was trying to figure out what to do after my four year and I saw a documentary about the Titanic and I was like oh awesome I didn't know you could explore shipwrecks you know I didn't know that was a career choice so I ended up applying I took a scuba diving course and I loved it and then I applied um, to East Carolina University and got my master's in maritime archaeology so it was mostly focused on shipwrecks um, but now at the Bureau of Archaeological Research, which I, I might call BAR on this, so that's the same thing. But now um, my PhD work is in a pre-contact or a prehistoric site that was inundated um, about 6,000 years ago. So I've moved away from shipwreck primarily and more into um, prehistoric sites. But I have done a few excavations on shipwrecks before. So, yeah. That's... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this was discovered in the Gulf of Mexico off of Southwest Florida, um, kind of South of Tampa. And it initially was located inland. Um, it was a prehistoric burial essentially. And then once sea level rise started by about 6,000 years ago, the site was inundated and it's now in an offshore context. So I'm trying to study the process of sea level rise at that site and how it affected that site and how portions of it were preserved. And I'm doing that by studying oysters that we found that were attached to cultural material, which kind of indicate that the material was exposed at some point and oysters grew on them. So, yeah. Wow, yeah, that's, that's amazing. And so you it's mentioned the, the oysters. Are these the same type of oysters that, you know, are found in the bay today? Or are they, or are they totally? Yeah, yeah, they're Eastern oysters or Crassostrea virginica. So, I mean, I don't know when they may have um, attached to cultural material, but hoping to use radiocarbon dating, which can be kind of troublesome on a shell. But so yeah, investigating these oysters to see when sea level rise was affecting this site. And yeah. And any idea on, you know, of, of course, you know, that's, that's a significant site, but do you, know, do you have any idea in terms of, are there other similar sites out that have not been discovered or that maybe have been discovered? Probably. Um, as, if we're talking about the prehistoric sites, um, years ago, most archeologists didn't think they would survive sea level rise. So you imagine like catastrophic waves, you know, crashing on a site if it's located on the coast. I mean, with FPN, you had um, the monitoring scouts that were looking at coastal sites that were being affected by hurricanes. So, I mean, a lot of people thought these things wouldn't really preserve, but mm -hmm more and more with surveys offshore there we're seeing paleo landscapes or relic landscapes that are still intact and if there's a feature in the remote sensing data that looks like a pond a buried pond i mean people gravitate towards water you could maybe expect that sites are also there as well so yeah, I think it's. Just I think there's more out there yeah, yeah. there's right. they're definitely hard to find it's like a needle in a haystack kind of thing um, but I think they are out there. We just don't know how well preserved some of them are. So, so um, it's, it has some attributes that are similar to Windover, which means um, Florida's indigenous groups were originally interring their deceased in the bottom of a peat pond. Peat is like that mucky stuff that you find on the bottom of lakes and, and freshwater body. Um, yeah, and then the peat helped preserve some of these organic artifacts like wooden stakes and cordage 
And I mean, the initial preservation of the site that we're looking at in the Gulf of Mexico definitely is attributed to that peat. And we were just shocked after sea level rise, it was still there. <laughs> so parts of it at least, yeah. We were completely surprised because nobody would tell you that a worked wooden stake or even cordage would, ha would still be there. <laughs> you know, cordage that dated to like 7,200 years ago is still there just in the Gulf of Mexico. So we're, you know, we still have a lot of research to do. How was that site located? You said that they're, you know, probably rare or maybe not rare, but certainly the ones that have been identified. How was that one? How did that come about? To be this was found be by a scuba diver. Um, he frequented the area and because there's fossils down there. So people usually dive for, you know, you think shark teeth. Um, and he came across something and he was like, that's that doesn't look like a shark tooth to me. And he ended up calling our office and it turned out to be a human mandible. So it was just rolling around on the site, unfortunately, because the site is eroding out of the seafloor. So our job at BAR is to manage sites that are on state lands and in state waters. And so we were called down to kind of figure out where this mandible might have come from. Did it, you know, wash away from the shore? And I mean, we thought initially it, it rolled into the ocean from the shore, like we wouldn't have thought this thing would have been preserved. And then turns out there was peat coming out of the seafloor and within the peat there were embedded um, wooden stakes and then other skeletal material. So, and then it became kind of a management issue because it's like, how do you stop the seafloor from eroding away from this site? And we tried to like sandbag it and protect as much as we can. So we want to be sensitive because you know, it's a burial. A big part of that is community involvement. So all of the, the houses on the shorefront, you know, went door to door and told them what, what was in their backyard, essentially, because <laughs> the backyard was their ocean. So, and I mean, there's a huge, the community is very interested. They're, they're very supportive of our work. They want to see it protected. So, yeah. Yeah, it's been... I think that also brings up, or you know, there's a. I think a lot of people have kind of a misconception about, you know, if it's if it's in the water, it's fair game, and you can just take it. Can you tell us? You mentioned the state waters and state yeah. submergence. Can you talk a little bit more about uh, the laws that protect it and what what BAR's role is? In them? Sure. Yeah. Um, so the state waters that I mentioned, because I'm an underwater archaeologist, I'm primarily concerned with. Um, archaeological sites in state waters and that includes rivers and springs and it's three nautical miles offshore from the beach on the atlantic side and then nine nautical miles offshore in the gulf of mexico so anything that falls within that three nautical mile or nine nautical mile kind of boundary uh the state manages and i mean we get calls all the time from people and they might they think they might have found something or they're worried because say a hurricane washes a shipwreck on shore, which has happened a couple of times. So our office gets alerted and then we either go out ourselves to record what we can, or we have like help from FPAN, for example, who, I mean, especially on the East coast, some of you guys have gone out there to map stuff that's washed ashore after hurricanes. So, yeah, I mean, really this office, I mean, BAR, we manage um, these archeological sites for the Florida public. So it's all held in trust for the public. So um, anything that, um, you know, we excavate or recover ends up in a museum. It comes to our collections and our conservation. And yeah, we manage it in a spirit of stewardship and trusteeship. <laughs> And so uh, you had also mentioned that, of course, what kind of got you interested, and I think it's probably true for most people who first uh, learn about that underwater archaeology is a thing or scuba diving is a thing with, like, the Titanic. Um, where, so were you – did you become a scuba diver before you became an underwater archaeologist, or how did that work out? It was – Let's see. I was at James Madison University for my undergrad and I saw that Titanic documentary and I was like, oh yeah, I want to do that. Like, I want to go deep, dark and scary and map these shipwrecks. And I went to my advisor and I was like, hey, I want to do, I want to be an underwater archaeologist. And her first question, she was like, do you even dive? <laughs> and I had never <laughs> dived before in my life. So we had a one credit scuba 
diving like course you could take at JMU. So I immediately signed up and I was like, I hope this works because I was already um, planning to apply to ECU and it worked out. I loved it. So it was great. But at ECU, they do have some people who show up like with no diving certification. It's just rolled into the scientific diving course. They just kind of get certified and then move right on up to scientific diver. So it's possible, but it's probably a good idea to know that you won't be claustrophobic or <laughs> yeah, have like, ear problems. <laughs> or can swim, I guess. It's kind of good to know, right? And yeah. so what, what is that process for, for people that have never like scuba dove before? What's, what's that process like? How do people do that? Well, let's see. When I did it, I did something called a try dive uh, the first time just to make sure that it was worth it to take the whole course. And basically with a, a scuba shop, they put me in some gear, they explained everything to me. And then we messed around in a pool and they kind of just let me explore and see if I liked it. And then once I figured out that, you know, I wasn't claustrophobic and I could manage, you know, clearing my ears, I signed up for the actual course and uh, yeah, it's like a, you spend a little bit of time in class and then you do a lot of dives in a pool and then, or a confined setting, you know, and then you have a couple of checkout dives that you have to do. Um, and mine were in a lake in West Virginia. It was very cold and I couldn't see anything, but <laughs> it was, yeah, I mean, it was adventurous. That's for sure. <laughs> so yeah, once I had the checkout dives, I was fully certified and ended up moving up through advanced dive master and then instructor over the years but nice yeah. it's not necessary right <laughs> you don't have yeah to. right and and so I like it you have any places that are kind of you mentioned you kind of learned in a difficult uh environment which i think is kind of good because if you learn in the keys that's your expectation like i learned in like pensacola bay you know <laughs> it's okay you can't see anything really but so do you have any favorite dive spots that you've been to that just really kind of come to your memory? Oh my gosh. I would say I did a project in the Northwestern Hawaiian islands. And so there's, wow. it's called Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. And it's basically kind of like the FKNMS, the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. You know, it's kind of like protected. Um, activities are really regulated there. But in Papahanaumokuakea, you're only allowed in there if you're doing research. So there's no fishing, there's no um, like recreational diving. It's and these islands are all north of the Big Island, so it's quite quite a ways out. <laughs> um, so basically, I got on a research vessel and we went three days up to the sanctuary, and um, yeah, we were monitoring cultural resources there and it's it was just unreal it was like pristine um most of the shipwrecks were still not like intact it was very odd some of the <laughs> i don't know how to explain it for example there was one shipwreck there that still had glass in the portholes oh, wow. and you don't normally find that especially if you're diving off like north carolina where i've been and florida because all of those wrecks can be accessible and people tend to like pick things off of wrecks which i would never really suggest so you don't really get to see a pristine wreck but because the um monument you know no one's allowed in there except for research purposes I mean, everything is still as it was when it wrecked. So I was on a World War II tanker and the ship's wheel, it was lying on its side, but the ship's wheel was still there and glass in the portholes. It was unreal. Oh. <laughs> I was like, I've never seen such an intact wreck, you know, unless yeah. they're really how, deep how and deep? no one can get to them. Right. I was going to ask you, how deep was that one? These were all pretty shallow. I mean, the Mission San Luis was um, not Mission San Luis, sorry, Mission San Miguel was like 30 feet deep oh wow yeah. so yeah really really not that deep at all and most of these um there were a couple of 1800s like whalers that we saw as well and these all wrecked because these are basically tiny little sand spits or atolls that jut just above the ocean and so if you're navigating and it's dark you it's very easy to run aground so a lot mm. of these tiny little atolls have ships that just ran aground right so that's uh, what happened to the mission san miguel and to a couple of whalers as well that we mapped um yeah that's it's unreal 
And so you, you said that those, of course, are, you know, off limits to mm -hmm. uh, like recreational divers. So where can recreational divers, if, you know, if someone is a recreational diver or it's that one, they've listened to you and now they're inspired to go get certified, where can they go find a shipwreck and dive on it? Assuming that they don't take anything off of it. Yeah, exactly. And that's my only suggestion. I mean, in Florida, you can dive anywhere and you're allowed to dive even on a shipwreck, it's just you're not allowed to take anything from it. And that's, again, to preserve it and to leave something behind for future researchers and future, the future public to enjoy. So, I mean, if you're in a if you're off the coast, the East Coast, you know, and you're diving, it's fine to be around shipwrecks, but obviously don't take anything from it. And we use the Panhandle Shipwreck Trail as an example. So that's most of those we're sunk as artificial reefs and we you know people recognize that well if i take something someone else might take something and then there's like this process of everyone takes something and there's nothing left and it's not fun to dive anymore mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. like it's it's cooler to see for me at least in my opinion it's cooler to see a porthole with intact glass than something that's been like ripped away you know mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean you can dive you can dive anywhere it's just better to leave things intact for sure and you so. mentioned the Panhandle Shipwreck Trails. Is that one that you've been able to dive on? And then if so, do yeah. you have any favorite favorite wrecks? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my office um, helps to manage the Panhandle Shipwreck Trail. And there are 12 wrecks. We were supposed to do like an expansion to add eight more in 2020, but we kind of couldn't get out there. <laughs> but oh, yeah. I've been on a few of them. I dove on a Riskini, which was the aircraft carrier from World War II, I think. And it was huge huge but it's very deep um so we only really got to hang out on the upper structure which was like beginning at 80 feet and down to like 140 feet so but i mean the the size of that aircraft carry it was it was unreal <laughs> so I, I think that might be my favorite uh -huh. um but i was on a couple of others um a tugboat and some let's see there's a minesweeper that we got to dive on as well because um, we are collecting updated footage, basically, of these wrecks, so we could put them on the website so that other people who maybe don't dive can actually get to experience this stuff as well. So, yeah, I would, I would highly suggest. Um, Miss Louise off Dustin, that one's a pretty nice one. I think it's like 30 feet deep, and it's a little tugboat, but there was mm. a resident sea turtle and everything, so it was oh, awesome. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of structure, yeah. And so to get on those wrecks, is this something that people can do from the shore, or they have to you know, chart a dive boat? And then how yeah, did, you'd how have to charter. Okay. Yeah, definitely. You'd have to charter. Um, but there are so many participating dive shops. I mean, you're in Pensacola, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, there, there are plenty uh -huh. of dive shops. And even in Destin and Panama City is off another um, place where you can access some of these wrecks. Yeah. Yeah, the Ariskany, I, I was able to dive that a few years ago. Cool. And, uh, <laughs> like a, maybe like a month or two later, there was like some a diver was on it. And they had a GoPro camera, and oh. they actually recorded a whale shark. It just Are right you serious? Out. Yeah. It, it, this was maybe like three or four years ago, and it made the rounds wow. online. I was like, you got to be kidding me. I missed it by that much, you know? Wow. Oh, this, oh, oh speaking there's of a shipwreck. There we happening. go. Let's huh, check. Look at that. Let's, let's check yeah. it out. Yeah, let's what? see what's going on here. Okay. Looks so like what, it was definitely beat up by a cannon, <laughs> I'm guessing. My goodness. Jeez. Is it resting on the bottom at all? That. Ooh. Not at all. It's still, wow, that's pretty cool. And so this is probably exactly what shipwrecks that you found look like, right? <laughs> Whole thing, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Normally by the time I get to them, they're pretty uh, pretty beat up, like snapped in half. Yeah. You know, um, like this one, if there was enough, oh, I don't know what that was, pressure, then it might <laughs> snap in half and then sink. So one of the, the minesweeper, the, I think it was the strength, it snapped in half. Oh, wow. But, makes for a cooler dive because you can right. kind of like look into it and it looks like huh. tristan has taken an artifact from the, from the oh room. my gosh <laughs> tristan i just said uh, yeah you're right oh my god tristan apparently <laughs> does not listen uh, don't worry Bat i'll lock a thousand here <laughs> <laughs> i'll lock them in the brig later on and look a banana okay. we heard uh <laughs> nicole told us that you're not supposed to bring bananas on a ship do you, do you know where that stems from i think she told us but i don't remember so can you well <laughs> 
there's probably many reasons, but the one I heard is because bunches of bananas could harbor insects, especially like uh, spiders that might be, you know, venomous. So, uh, you know, I've definitely brought bananas on board some bananas. of our boats and have been uh, just nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what so. about what about if it's like a squeezable, squeezable? And it's like you a know, banana squeezable. Does that count? Or does I think it have that's to be? fine. I think that's, that's fine. That's okay. Because I've even tried to like hide the bananas in my peanut butter and banana sandwiches. Oh, but people yeah. were like, mm -hmm. what, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> or so. like banana chips, right? I mean, okay. they, they don't go okay. bad. Or maybe they do. I don't know. I wonder if it's like peel on is when that's uh, supposedly bad luck. Or right. if I could have my peanut butter and banana sandwich, you know, <laughs> diving, diving can be rigorous. I gotta, I gotta refuel somehow. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, can you tell us, you've mentioned a little bit about, of course, this doesn't look like most shipwrecks that you've been on. Um, and I assume you probably haven't found a lot of like treasure can you because i think that's another thing that people think of when they think of shipwrecks. that's true yeah they think of like pirates and treasure and yeah swashbuckling but mm. most of the stuff um i mean when you say treasure i'm guessing like gold and silver and right yeah some uh -huh. beautiful precious stones okay there's all right yeah see, well i mean so you're wrong it's it's can't be wrong <laughs> if it's in this game it's right? definitely yeah <laughs> oh perfect <laughs> No, I haven't actually ever found treasure. I mean, I think all of it is treasure, but that's like the nerdy <laughs> standard answer. <laughs> I mean, the knowledge to me is what I'm after um, for sure. But I have been on a Spanish colonial shipwreck in Biscayne Bay. Um, most of that was just structure that was left and some ballast stones. Um, that one wrecked during a hurricane, so it was kind of spread all over the place. Um, yeah i mean i was on a danish i believe it was danish um shipwreck that had wrecked off of costa rica and that one had was laden with bricks so oh cool um yeah and then but, go ahead no i was gonna say but not uh gold coins bricks no not no, bricks and I think, not bricks of gold these are like bricks like building like, bricks yeah <laughs> you build a house yeah. with well, and I think there is a little bit of a misconception that like all wrecks will have gold, like treasure on them. But um, uh -huh. I, that definitely stems from, so there were a couple of Spanish fleets that would come through in the colonial period. And a lot of them did have silver, um, gold, and you know precious stones. So obviously when those were lost, the Spanish would try to salvage as much as possible, but sometimes cargo would be left behind and then i think there was like a huge maybe like media kind of mm -hmm. thing when some of these were discovered especially like with the atocha if you think about atocha i mean so it sparked a frenzy where everyone was like oh my god all these shipwrecks have gold and silver on them but really i mean in my whole professional career as an underwater archaeologist i've never found gold and silver on one so yeah maybe yeah. one day well i think i i found something that you would consider just as valuable as gold. I'm on the, the bow over here. Yes. I don't know if Tristan, you want to come over here, but I think I found oysters. Oh, perfect. That's what I need. <laughs> so there, there you go. Do you, do you want me to cut some of these off for you? Bring, There's a wealth of information. Back to, I don't know if these are oysters. Look at y'all swimming around. Barnacles, barnacles maybe? Barnacles, maybe? Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Hey, still. They have shells. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they can tell you things that like maybe i don't know yeah i mean you could date them that's for sure right yeah and i like if you could identify the species you could figure out where that ship oh oh my god yeah i'm gonna go so ahead and leave i guess thing. are you are you pirates in this game are you supposed to be pillaging we, these uh yes these shipwrecks okay, yeah we're cool we're basically cool. there's other people online right now okay in okay and you're trying to hunt, hunt them down and uh that's right and okay. i think you can do like little mini quests you know you can go find buried treasure and maybe we can do okay. some of that but but uh there are privateers in this game as well or just pirates i don't think they really distinguish in this <laughs> okay. game you know I mean, it's, usually it's like probably what happens is and whenever tristan and i play this game and we ever do come across another pirate it's probably like a 12 year old kid and they always beat us. I mean, oh. every single time they destroy us. If I'm not mistaken, that's what happened with in 1715 with the treasure plate fleet. Basically, it they, 
a hurricane hit it and destroyed most of it. And the Spanish, they didn't just like go, oh, well, guess we lost all that gold. They tried to like salvage it. So oh, they yeah. set up camps to salvage it. But I guess there were a group of pirates who learned about these salvage camps and they were like, hey, let's go attack those salvage camps. <laughs> And then, and, yeah, it's like you do all the work and then you go back to the <laughs> island. And, <laughs> it was yeah. like, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. So that's cool that they have added that. But, yeah, I think this game, I'm not really sure. It seems like it's mixed in a lot of different time periods, too. Okay. You have different, you know, you, when we first started the game out, yeah. Do what? Oh, that way. I'm going. You said west. I'm headed west. So you mean... Northwest. <laughs> well, well, you you are the navigator. I am the helmsman. It's, I'm not driving. I'm, I'm manning the helm. Navigating this boat in these. <laughs> yeah, you're the seas. navigator. I was not trained in the art of navigation. That's beyond my skill set. You're captain. You're heading to that island over there. Is that where you're? Oh. Which one? <laughs> Which one? The big one? Yeah. Okay. I got it. I got it. Yeah. I get. Let me get my bearings here. There you go. There we go. All right. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, this game is, you know, it kind of mixes up time periods, and when you start the game out, you can choose between, uh, I think, you know, a sloop is what we chose, a brigantine or a galleon, okay. which I think, you know, galleons were, if if I'm not mistaken, galleons aren't something they usually used in like, you know, the 1800s, right? I mean, that was. A little bit right. earlier. 1700s and yeah I mean and your sloop is nice because it's a little bit faster too so if you're trying to like get escape the other folks. <laughs> have a motor. Oh, okay. There <laughs> <Clearly>. we go. <laughs> Sometimes to stop ships they would just crash right into the rocks like this. <laughs> well you run aground I guess. <laughs> Did you uh lower the anchor? Oh, <laughs> okay. This is just think, gonna disappear. <laughs> I think I found uh, our problem. You know, we gotta, we gotta communicate here. Oh you my just gosh! Jumped off. I might have to come back around and get you. Hold on. Oh, you're still okay. Did you jump off? He's definitely. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> he abandoned ship. <laughs> he abandoned me. Yeah. Don't worry about me. I'll just go park this thing by myself. No big deal. <laughs> I'll just uh, get the diesel engine going. Go park this. Yep. You know, let's turn the key. Oh, yeah. The, there are mermaids. Oh. If, you, if you die, then I think basically you just swim towards like a mermaid and you, you're brought back to That's cool. Davy Jones Locker, which is like a ghost ship. Okay. And I, Makes I sense. guess if, eventually you're able to come back. I mean, didn't they think manatees were mermaids at some point? I saw a manatee <laughs> once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. So tell us, how was that seeing a manatee? Did oh, you, my like, gosh. dive with them? Yeah. I mean, I had, I came from Virginia, so I'd never seen a manatee before. Didn't really know what it was. And then um, my colleague and I were, let's see, we had, we did like a live boat drop and we were on that prehistoric site that I was talking about. And we were just kind of drifting for a minute. Um, we were going to check if our anchor had set at some point. And I, I was looking at him and behind him, something kind of was just like looming. And I was like, crap, it's probably a shark. <laughs> and it was a manatee. <laughs> so we just, you know, we didn't move. We just kind of hovered in the water column and the manatee swam around us out of curiosity and then just like went on about its business. But yeah, it was really cool. That's so <laughs> awesome. You yeah, know, we so were peaceful. <laughs> we were in Crystal River. I don't remember, like maybe a uh, year or two ago. And I was thinking, oh, we're going to see so many manatees. You know how many manatees I saw? Zero. Zero? I see, oh. see, it's like, well, I didn't go on like the manatee cruise, so maybe okay. I should have done okay. that. But my impression was that I could just like walk outside and bump and into one. Yeah, <laughs> but, but apparently you really have to like search for the manatee. I'm thinking it's a scam, Darn. and they just like moved all the manatees to this certain area that only the tour boats can take you oh, to. Okay. okay. That's what I'm thinking. I think there's something fishy going on. <laughs> I've seen a few in the St. Mark's River when I was kayaking, but oh, cool! Yeah, other than that, like the the one instance in the Gulf of Mexico, like that was the only time I actually really got to see one underwater. Mm -hmm. So it was a really nice experience, and it was also nice that it wasn't just a shark coming to see what we were up to. Because <laughs> I've seen sharks before, and most of the time they're fine. 
but I saw um, a tiger shark once and those are oh, ones you do not want to mess yeah, with. And I was yeah. like, this sucks. <laughs> I don't want to be on the surface at the moment. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh I mean, no. Uh, gee, I wonder if it's because I, cr yeah, probably the rock caused it. That'll get out know. of hand real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where's your bilge pump? I don't, that's the other thing they don't have in this game, which I think is kind of silly. They have a, they have, they have a pump that pumps in water, but not oh. a pump that pumps water out. Huh. So you're just going to bail it out, I see. <laughs> yeah, you just get a bucket, basically, and then uh -huh. you slap some boards on. Just like in real life, right? Yeah, I mean, you know. Okay. Yeah, it is kind of cool when the ship catches on fire. That happened to us last time. <laughs> That's the other thing. You have to vote for things, just like in real pirates. Nice. Okay. And so you're, uh, you mentioned being with the tiger shark. When, what was that like? What, when, where did that happen at? And how that frequently? Was, um, only... Well, really only saw the one that was again in Papahanaumokuakea Makua in, in the Northwestern Hawaiian islands. And, um, most of what we did was, I mean, we weren't really on shore or anything because these atolls are so small, but there was one day that we were going to swim ashore and look for a shipwreck survivor camp, um, or remains of one on this little sand spit. And just as we were about to jump in the water, you know, you don't want to be on the surface when there's a tiger shark around because <laughs> they're very curious. Um, and yeah, we were about to jump out of the little Zodiac boat and swim to shore. And someone on the boat was like, what was that? And we had look around and this tiger shark had like swooped up from the bottom and oh, grabbed an albatross and was like kind of playing with it at the surface. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, I'm about to be in this water with this right? tiger shark. But the, the captain of the boat was like, all right, he's busy. I'm going to like take you a little bit farther away. Just jump in and swim straight to the straight to the shore. I don't think I've ever swum so fast in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fine, you know? Yeah. None of us amazing. were like followed by him or anything. So, yeah. Didn't find the shipwreck survivor camp, but uh, it was still an adventurous day, I would yeah, say. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds like it. I mean, anytime your day incorporates a tiger shark into it you and you survived, yeah. you did something right. You have something to be proud of, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> the other we um yeah we would do surveys from that boat where essentially there was a, a line out the back of the boat and you were just kind of snorkeling on the surface and you'd hold on to the line and the captain would just go very slowly and it was essentially like mowing the lawn you know you've got someone on snorkel they're looking left to right while they're being pulled by this boat looking for any um like shipwrecks or anything any archaeological site and there were black tip reef sharks that would follow us um, oh, wow. just out of curiosity. They were, they were harmless, but yeah, I was being towed by the boat once and I kind of like stuck my head out of the water and looked behind me and I was like, Oh, there's sharks back there. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm like, I'm the fishing you're bait. The, you're you know? the bait. Yeah. You are the bait. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty funny. Does oh that my happen gosh. in water world? <laughs> Does it? <laughs> wow. Okay. So uh, I got to live some water world yeah. <laughs> during my archeological survey. <laughs> The greatest movie ever made. Water yes. <laughs> I actually rewatched that during the pandemic. Cause I oh, was nice. like, Oh, you know, it's been years. It's been years since I've seen it. And, was it know, just as good as you remembered it? I don't want to be rude and say it doesn't hold up, but <laughs> it was a little, you know, it was still, it was still interesting. <laughs> right. And I guess it does deal with uh, global warming, right? Isn't that, oh yeah. What are we doing? Um, uh oh. Well, I'm trying to not hit that island. Oh my god. Because I stopped steering. He was busy talking, thinking about Waterworld and how oh, was, cool was, of a notion it was. It's <laughs> such an amazing movie for all the wrong reasons. Wait, what? Oh my god. Is your anchor down? Yeah. I, wait, do oh you want me? My. Do you want it up or down? Do you want it up? Wait, is it up? I guess it's not. Here, let me help you out. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we lose every time we get into a battle with someone. This is why, yeah. Our How many is terrible. ships have you sunk? <laughs> <laughs> Yours. <laughs> several times. Several okay. times. It's like actually kind of embarrassing and pathetic when we get into a battle with another ship on how terrible we are i mean i'm it's sure probably... i would be awful so no judgment here <laughs> no it's it's probably mostly my fault really you know as you can see i feel like i would just get so distracted <laughs> it is yeah there's a lot going on you got to worry about you know getting boards to plug up holes and then you got to worry about getting more cannonballs to 
load into the cannon. So there's there's a lot. You happening. got a busy time. You do. Yeah, some of the like the mechanics on it is kind of interesting with sailing. As you can see, like we have to actually like uh, reef the sail sometimes. Uh, that's cool. So that's kind of interesting. I don't okay. know how. I, I've been on a sail ship, but I've never been the person like responsible for anything. Yeah, me ship. either. <laughs> I've just kind of been like t told what to do. Right. <laughs> do it. So. <laughs> They're like, belay the line. I'm like, what? What's a line? You know, like, what are you talking, you're talking about? This rope? <laughs> That's a rope. <laughs> you know, you got to explain these things in layman's terms. But yeah. And so, yeah, there's a lot of terms, a lot of terms. You know, most of my experience is like powered boats. So, mm -hmm. oof. Yeah, big, big difference. Sailboat is a whole different thing. My goodness. It's a lot to pay attention to, for sure. And so, as you can see, we have just the two two cannons on board this sloop okay. have you ever come across cannons and then like what's the process for recovering them and conserving them because i imagine that has to be done yeah well i've seen quite a few um in my experience um off of costa rica one of those besides the brick wreck that i talked about there was a scatter of cannon and an anchor close to shore and we think that a ship was running aground or uh, maybe we're stuck in a bit shallower water than they wanted to. So they chucked all the stuff overboard, all the heavy cannon overboard. And that's why they were kind of scattered around the reef. Because that would help the ship get a little bit lighter and maybe back off of the reef. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we, we left those ones in place. I think a lot, you know, in the past they were recovered a bit more. But now, um, especially in Florida, I mean, we don't really recover cannon like we used to, because it, it does take a long time to conserve them, you know, this giant hunk of metal with concretion all over it from being underwater for so long, it, it can take quite a long time um, to conserve it properly. But yeah, basically you want to leave it the basic process. Once you've recovered it, it, it'll sit in a tank with water and it might undergo electrolysis where um, the concretion is slowly removed um, and then when that is removed, it's dried. And then there's like a protective layer usually put over it. Um, I don't know if they use tannic acid anymore. I haven't done conservator work for a while. So <laughs> that happens after me. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Once I've studied the site. So. Right. Yeah. Everybody's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so but. you guys, you all at BAR, you ha do you have a conservation facility like that? Yeah, we do. And we have a couple of tanks. Um, I think all of them are kind of full right now. Um, but yeah, we gold. have <laughs> yeah, just mostly like <laughs> iron <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's a, a lab and um, there are two folks there right now, I think, um, full time. But then we also have a collections facility. So once the conservators are finished with their portion, um, then the objects will get sent to collections and then we'll either loan them out to museums across the state or we'll host them in our own museum locally here in Tallahassee. Um, yeah. Or they sit in collections for, you know, research purposes and collections offers tours and stuff too. Though I think during the pandemic, they've had to stop unfortunately, but right, yeah. 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 Oh gosh. I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, but yeah. Definitely, definitely across Florida, possibly across the country. <laughs> I don't know. But, yeah. yeah. It's such a cool resource that we have here in the state, VAR, and it's just the whole division and what, what's there. I remember the, my first time ever going to the collections facility. Now it's located in, um, I believe, still at Mission San Luis. Yeah. But years ago, uh, I worked on an exhibit. We did this like, little exhibit about pirates kind of in the local area and uh so we, we went there to see if we could find any artifacts that we could maybe get on loan because they have a great loan program with the state yeah and uh i went to the the address and it's like man this looks like a like a grocery store like the building <laughs> and it, and it's because the facility at one time was a Publix. And they, are you serious? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There was there's there was a old Publix, I guess, that like closed down, and so the state, I guess, they were renting it from the huh. the land landlords, I guess, okay. for years. And it wasn't until they had moved the collections, I think, probably back in 
might have been 2011, 2012, when they when they actually moved the collection from the the old Publix building into where it's at now. But I, I remember though, like walking in that facility, and it's, it's some of the most incredible things I've ever seen in my life. Just just right there, and it's yeah, I've always it so cool that we have that as a resource um, for other museums, not just in Florida, but all across the country. Yeah, and they've got a pretty um, pretty cool tour. Like I would suggest once you know it's safe to do so because I don't think they're offering tours right now, but definitely. Yeah, take a tour, visit the museum. It's awesome. Those resources are there, definitely. Like, we want public to have access to them, too. And I think some of the 1733 artifacts are online in, like, a 3D mode. So um, that's something that people could do in the meantime, <laughs> kind of check right, out some of the yeah. artifacts from shipwrecks. So I think it's called History in 3D or something. They It might be on Sketchfab, too, but there there is a dedicated website for one of the Spanish plate fleets, um, and you can kind of look at some of the artifacts that came from, you know, Spanish colonial shipwreck. So, yeah, you can play this game and then go check out some artifacts 3D and <laughs> right, see what it's it's really like. Or yeah. maybe maybe what would be cool is if the game developers took some of those 3D models and incorporated them into the game. How cool would that have be? a little like tidbit of yeah nifty historical information too, just like. Did you know? <laughs> <laughs> don't steal the artifact. Like when you go to a sh shipwreck, it tells you, like, don't do that. Or like you just die when you do it. You like a curse and you die. <laughs> you get cursed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we'll definitely put uh, that uh, Florida History in 3D. I'll put that yeah, website can... link into the description. Whenever we get it up on the YouTube channel, I'll make sure I'll put that Oh, in cool. There. Yeah, it's nifty for sure. Well, we're about at our hour of so almost one o'clock and we've not oh listen, we didn't get into a battle maybe we should try to find a storm and just see what happens before we ride out ride out the storm do you want to do that this is a nifty game though yeah it's fun for what it is you know the the battle part is probably what most people are interested in but oh sure yeah you know it's fun to sail around and the storms when you actually get into a storm it's kind of cool to see i'm sure it's was probably way worse in real life but gives people a little bit of taste of what it might have been like Oof. to sail on a pirate ship from who knows what time period this is. I have no idea. It's all mixed up. Cool. <laughs> well, is there anything else you want to mention, Melissa? I know we've talked about the Panhandle Shipwreck Trail and a little bit more about BAR. Where, where can people find some of this information? Do you guys have a, a website? Yeah, I'm well, sure I could link to it. Yeah, the Panhandle Shipwreck Trail has a Facebook page, and we do have, like, um, 3D immersive experience kind of videos um, that people could check out if they're kind of like missing diving or have never been diving and want to kind of see what a sh wreck looks like underwater. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, our general Department of State, you know, website, I can send you links to those as well to the Bureau of Archaeological Research and the History in 3D, too. So Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'll definitely put those up. But I want to thank you for joining us. It's been great talking yeah. to you, playing this game. Uh, Tristan, oh, there he just—he's gonna blow our <laughs> ship up. Oh my! I gosh. was gonna say we could go out with a sea shanty a since bang. it's so popular on TikTok <laughs> right now. We could go out. Let's do Bos Bosun's Bill. But uh, oh, yeah, I'll put great. those. I'll put those links up on our. Whenever I get this up on our YouTube channel, I'll be sure to put those up uh, cool. when I get it up on there. Um, we've got next week. We've got an archaeology arcade episode uh, with uh, a couple developers that created the tragedy and survival landscape that will be really cool to check out um, tonight if people are watching this on twitch live right now tonight we actually do have a virtual talk about the tristan de luna shipwrecks and the expedition that happened in pensacola in 1559 you can go if you follow fpan northeast you can find the link to that i think you can find it on our facebook too uh, and I'm pretty sure there's still time to sign up for that if you want to do it. It's at 7 p.m. tonight. Um, and as always, for all our video content, since this uh, crazy pandemic's happened, we've created a YouTube channel and tried to become uh, YouTubers, I guess. But you can all find that through uh, our YouTube channel, which is just YouTube slash Florida Public Archaeology Network, all spelled out. Check out uh, DHR, Division Historical Resources, and all the cool stuff they have online. I'll put that in the description as well. Uh, shipwreck trails i'll put both of those on there too and so thanks for joining us and then we'll see everybody next time next week hopefully you'll join us then
Bye, everybody.